Have you ever wondered where COVID-19 really came from? A question that has been on the minds of many since the virus began its relentless spread across the globe. It was the end of 2019 when the world first heard the term COVID-19. A virus so small yet so powerful, it brought the entire world to its knees. It moved swiftly, silently, a ghostly predator leaving no corner of the globe untouched. The immediate theory, propagated by scientists and media alike, was that this was a virus of natural origin. A zoonotic disease, they said, jumping from animals to humans, possibly within the unassuming confines of a seafood market in Wuhan, China. The blame was quickly placed on bats, pangolins, even snakes. The world, in its collective fear and desperation, accepted this narrative. After all, we've seen it before. SARS, MERS, even Ebola, all zoonotic diseases. But as the pandemic took a firm grip on our lives, some began to question this widely accepted narrative. Theories emerged, whispers really, suggesting that the origins of this virus might not be as straightforward as we were led to believe. The whispers grew louder, fueled by inconsistencies, anomalies, and a growing body of evidence that suggested an alternative origin. Was it possible, some asked, that the virus was not a product of nature, but of science? Could it have been concocted within the sterile walls of a laboratory, an inadvertent consequence of well-intentioned research, or perhaps something more sinister? These questions, initially dismissed as conspiracy theories, began to gain traction. The debate was ignited. On one side, the proponents of the natural origin theory, armed with precedents and scientific consensus. On the other, a group of skeptics, challenging the mainstream narrative, armed with questions, anomalies, and a growing body of alternative evidence. But what if the widely accepted narrative isn't the whole truth? As we delve deeper into this debate, prepare to question what you know, challenge what you've been told, and explore the mysteries concealed beneath the surface of this global catastrophe. Ever heard of gain-of-function research? It's a kind of scientific study that could be a key to this puzzle. Let's dive into the depths of this scientific term. Gain-of-function research involves manipulating a virus to enhance its capabilities, often to understand how it could potentially evolve or mutate, and to develop effective vaccines and treatments. It's like giving the virus a set of new skills. Now, this could be as harmless as teaching a child to ride a bike, or as dangerous as handing over the keys of a supercar to a novice. So where does the Wuhan Institute of Virology come into play? Well, this institute is one of the few places in the world that conducts gain-of-function research on coronaviruses. It's like the Hogwarts for virus wizards, where viruses are tweaked and twisted to unravel their secret spells. But every magic comes with a price, and here it's the risk of a potential pandemic. Imagine if one of these enhanced viruses escapes the confines of the lab, it could wreak havoc in the world outside, much like a mythical creature breaking free from a wizard's control. This is why gain-of-function research is controversial. It's a double-edged sword. On one hand, it offers invaluable insights into viral behavior, helping us prepare for future outbreaks. On the other hand, it carries the risk of creating a virus more potent than nature intended. Now let's connect the dots. An institute that specializes in gain-of-function research on coronaviruses is located in the same city where the first cases of COVID-19 were reported. Sounds like a mere coincidence? Or could it be, as some suggest, a sign of something more sinister? We're not suggesting anything definitive here. We're merely exploring possibilities, asking questions that need to be asked. After all, history is often not what it seems on the surface. Could this type of research have played a role in the pandemic's origin? As we delve deeper into this enigma, the pieces of the puzzle might just start to fall into place. In the shadows of this debate, whispers of leaked documents and brave whistleblappers emerged. We've all heard the stories, the rumors, the hushed conversations about documents that slip through the cracks and voices that refuse to be silenced. These are the tales of those who dared to speak up, those who pointed towards a lab, not nature, as the origin of this pandemic. Take for example, Dr. Li Meng Yan, a virologist from Hong Kong, who fled to the US in April 2020. She claimed to have evidence that COVID-19 was indeed created in a lab. Her report, though dismissed by many as conspiracy theory, has sparked a fierce debate. Then, there are the leaked cables from the US Embassy in Beijing, 
which reveal concerns about safety and management weaknesses at the Wuhan Institute of Virology back in 2018. The cables noted that the lab's work on bat coronaviruses and their potential human transmission represented a risk of a new SARS-like pandemic. And let's not forget the trove of emails from Dr. Anthony Fauci, the U.S. quote, as top infectious disease expert, that were released under the Freedom of Information Act. Among these, some have pointed to correspondence that suggests he was aware of the possibility that the virus could have escaped from a lab. The reception to these leaks and revelations has been mixed. Some dismiss them as nothing more than conspiracy theories or misinformation. Others see them as crucial pieces of a puzzle that's been deliberately obscured. Authorities have been largely silent or dismissive, but that hasn't stopped the whispers from growing louder. In a world where truth often seems stranger than fiction, these leaked documents and whistleblower statements serve as reminders that there are always multiple sides to a story, and sometimes the most intriguing narratives are the ones hidden in the shadows. So if there's smoke, is there fire? The question lingers, casting a long shadow over the origins of COVID-19. And while the smoke may not always lead us to a blazing inferno, it certainly points to a flame that refuses to die down. Despite alternative evidence and theories, the natural origin theory remains the most widely accepted. But why? Let's delve into the mechanics of this dominant narrative. The natural origin theory suggesting COVID-19 jumped from animals to humans is a narrative that's easy to digest. It's an occurrence we've seen before with SARS and MERS, and it's a story that fits neatly into our understanding of how diseases emerge. But there's more to this narrative than meets the eye. Politics, media, and public opinion play a significant role in shaping these narratives. We live in a world where information is power, but it's also a tool that can be manipulated to serve various interests. In the case of COVID-19, the stakes are high, and so is the potential for manipulation. Take politics, for instance. Political narratives often prioritize national interests and global reputations. Accepting a lab origin theory could lead to international tensions, finger pointing, and blame games. Therefore, it's not surprising that a natural origin theory is more palatable to the political palate. Then there's the role of media. Media outlets can amplify, suppress, or skew information, shaping public opinion in the process. In the early stages of the pandemic, the media largely echoed the natural origin theory, potentially influenced by political narratives and the desire to avoid panic. Finally, we have public opinion. It's easier for the public to accept a narrative that's straightforward and aligns with past experiences. A lab origin theory, on the other hand, opens up a Pandora's box of discomforting questions and fears. So, are we looking at a simple case of a virus jumping species? Or is there a complex web of politics, media influence, and public opinion shaping our understanding of COVID-19's origins? It's a question that demands critical thinking and a willingness to question the status quo. It's a question that makes us wonder, is it possible that we've been misled? It's time to challenge the conventional, the widely accepted, and the comfortable. In the preceding scenes, we've navigated through the murky waters of the COVID-19 origins debate, dared to scrutinize the controversial gain-of-function research, and had a closer look at the whistleblower statements and leaked documents that hint at lab involvement. We've examined why the natural origin theory was promoted so fervently, even in the face of contradicting evidence. Now let's turn the lens on ourselves. Why do we so readily accept the dominant narrative? Is it because it's easier or because we trust the sources that peddle it? But history has shown us time and again that the truth is often stranger than fiction and that the accepted narrative can be, and often is, challenged. Take a moment to consider the evidence presented, not as a skeptic or a believer, but as a seeker of truth. Question the narratives that are handed down to us. Are they a result of meticulous research or are they conditioned by agendas and politics? Is there room for doubt, for further investigation, for an alternative viewpoint? We've seen that there's more to the story of COVID-19 than what meets the eye. We've seen that the accepted truth may not be the whole truth. And that's not just about this pandemic, it's about history, science, and the way we understand the world around us. So let's not settle for the conventional. Let's challenge the narratives that are too comfortable, too widely accepted. Let's dig deeper, question more, and seek out the truths that lie beneath the surface, for it's only by doing so that we can hope to uncover the full picture. If you're intrigued by the unconventional, eager to challenge historical norms, 
and ready to explore the charted but with a different lens, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time.